thank you, Paul, and um, and thank you for the Irish uh, delegation for hosting this event. Um, and no, I'm not the one to blame. Thank God, uh, praise Allah. We have four directors, like a table. We are standing still and, and anyone can blame and be why we can share the blame around. But um, after a year and a half, we have a new, a new model draft treaty. We're very happy with it. Um, it's so sad that uh, Corona didn't allow us to have some uh, parties together uh, with the new draft, like we should have. Um, and, and I, I, I have to say, I was actually planning to give one of, of these usual speeches on how how we can focus on the obstacles and and how goodwill will will be the only way to move forward. But actually, and and following a discussion that we had um, all of us speakers yesterday, um, I, I realized that I would like to begin from something more optimistic. When I started uh, working on disarmament, and since English is not my first language, uh, and I'm still uh, more comfortable in English than in real English, um, I didn't know that there's a difference between disarmament and dismantlement. So, because in Hebrew, we use the same terms usually. And one of the things that I really enjoyed learning was that dismantlement was just one part of disarmament. And the disarmament actually is the whole process. So when we're looking at civil society, at, at the governments, at what happens at the UN, at things that sometimes move so slow that it's very frustrating and sometimes it moves so slow you can't see the movement. But actually disarmament or weapons of mass, disarm, weapons of mass uh, destruction and um, disarmament in the Middle East have started already. It started in November 2019 when the state sat in the room and decided to, to come out with a document that they all agreed on. When they managed to go through the first round of talks and come out with one paper, they all agreed on. And yes, Israel was not in the room. The United States was not in the room, but the decision was to continue. The first line was even, the first paragraph was even about the involvement of others, of civil society, about being an inclusive process. So if we're looking back, and it's a bit hard because of COVID and so on, I mean, life were hectic, lots of changes, but if we're looking backward, we can actually realize that we are in the middle of this armament in the Middle East. Yes, it's just the beginning but we are at the process. And this process is something that we need to protect. The November conference process is something that we all need to protect. The states, the, the states that are not from the zone, the superpowers, the major players at the NPT, at the upcoming uh, first meeting of states of the TPNW, the way that you talk about the Middle East, the way that sometimes you're using the Middle East is very unhealthy always. But even so now, when we do have a process to protect. So I can say that as civil society and as people from within the Middle East, looking outside or looking at the, the way that states behave and states talk to each other and the way that the, NP, that, that the Middle East was used at the last review conference um, as a reason for no final document, this kind of unhealthy treatment towards the Middle East is unhealthy, is, is unacceptable anymore. Not when there's a process to protect. If you can't reach a final document, it's mainly because the nuclear armed states are not willing to disarm or to put a timeline or to have a discussion. But we in the Middle East, we already have a discussion, protect it. States from within the zone, you're in the room. Israel is not there. There's such an opportunity to move forward on everything that you can agree. And there are so many things you can agree and move on. I mean, it is, it is obvious that there's so much frustration that Israel and the United States are not in the room, but at the same time in a room that needs consensus, 
you can still play the role. You're still there. You're creating a zone. You're creating a text. And for that, you don't need Israel in the room. Yes, it would be great if Israel was in the room, but also destructive, maybe, because the discourse in Israel is not ripe yet. But this is also up to civil society. So I am sure that the states in the room can achieve much more than they even think about or, or imagine two or three years ago. Also, because they have the will, they are in the room, and and things like um, um, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say, but things like our previous draft treaty, this draft treaty is is a good start of conversation, but it's not only. I mean, the, the Egyptian uh, delegation is submitting a new a new uh, treaty or draft treaty. Other delegations have have uh, submitted papers. There's so much room to to agree on and continue. And civil society, it is up to us to maintain a discourse that supports this process. We are so used to mimic the language of, of, uh, of states. We're talking to the papers. I mean, we, we have talks, we have panels, sometimes lots of panels of European talking about the Middle East, but not with the Middle East. We keep talking about, we're continuing with the discourse on whether Israel should join the NPT first or not, making decisions at the NPT where Israel is not party on, instead of thinking how can we bring Israel to the table. Keep asking from other states what it is, uh, the keeping the Middle East from becoming or what it is that we can do and not having the same campaign to create a weapon of mass destruction in Europe and England, for example. I mean, there's no excuse there. But, oh, and, and also when it comes to Iran, Continuing the discourse on how many centrifuges, which is the wrong question. The question is, why hasn't Iran built a nuclear weapon yet? And the, of course, the answer is a decision. Why are we still talking about the things that the governments might feel comfortable to talk, but us as civil society should totally change the discourse? Because if we are responsible and we should be responsible, then the discourse about Iran should have been totally different, for example. As civil society, we wanted to check what can help, how can we protect, help protect from our side this, um, this process. And one of the things that is in our powers when we're sitting together imagining things was to imagine a new model, a new way for the states to stay all in the same building, a building that we totally imagined, a building that we started calling the Middle East Treaty Organization until there'll be a new name that the states will give. We came up with a new model that might make some of the states more comfortable or less comfortable, but it doesn't really matter because what matters is, is that we're trying to create multiple ways to show possibilities for the state. We're not engaged with this text. We're not in love with this text. It's only a, a draft. Um, in this draft, unlike the previous draft, we tried to imagine a thicker layer of verifications, mechanism of compliance and confidence building measure. And, and for this, and this time we were so lucky to have uh, Leo with us, which Paul will represent much better than me, um, that, that was able to create something beautiful. He called the common system for the Middle East Treaty Organization. And I'll stop here uh, so, so Leo can, uh, can shed light on the new draft. <laughs>